Let's get to Frank's charts. All right. Uh, end of Friday, every end of Friday, Frank brings three charts. Uh, you know, he peruse. I mean, Frank, you look at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of charts. Uh, at the end of Friday, Frank brings three of the ones he likes the best. Yeah, I always the enjoy segment. Frank charts and so creative, so creative. <laughs> but but there's no going back now, right? Oh, it's Frank's charts. It's, it's just been Frank charts for too long. It can't go back to uh to a fancier name. But uh, that's right. I'm a simple dude. I like to keep things as simple for myself as humanly possible. And at least this way, I don't forget my own name. Uh, right. So it's just <laughs> always, a, always a plus. Uh, yeah. And there's, you know, broadly speaking, no surprises. It's not particularly uh, pretty out there. Right. You're just not getting a tremendous amount of great charts that are looking like yeah that's the that's the one for for me but there's always somebody uh to the downside i mean a lot of things with the last two days of selling they're pretty overextended you know as i think you're probably looking at wanting to see some sort of you know floor breakdown type of plays or wait for the retracement uh if you will uh but a few bulls that uh, that i had i'm going to start with uh, an old well, kind of a new old friend, Albertsons, ACI. And don't don't think for one second, Mark, I'm not going to take this opportunity to look at a few more than three. Okay. Uh, I got to make up for Maddie. Uh, you know, I, I, I know that that's what he would want. All right. So ACI. So AC, Break it down. I'll be I'll be your hands. You be uh, the... So so Albertsons, you know, uh, a, a good a good friend uh, to me. I've enjoyed some time as many tackle traders have with Albertsons, uh, really kind of pulled back, pretty heavy selling, working its way back down to the 200. We did get our 200 bounce, and it was pretty pretty mellow, uh, right, rallying back up. And now it's not maybe a textbook, but we got a little pinchy action kind of developing with that rising nine, trying to get us through that 50. I always love on, on you know 50 breaks, whether it's pinches or just breaks of the 50 or whatever moving average it is, I always like when it tests at once and fails, right? I'm sure you do as well. We've seen that happen when Albertsons got to the 50. That was the kiss goodbye short term, right? Drifted back down. But as of right now, we're still holding that short term rising nine uh, EMA. Just looking at these guys to, you know, it's maybe more of a position than a swing trade for me, but looking at probably taking out that high from the 15th as the ultimate confirmation, but I could also get behind a close above the 50 and follow through the next day as confirmation as well, looking to get into this longer term trend, which is fantastic on Albertsons, right? They've been super strong since their IPO. They've been in a good solid trend. The support zone holding, that was an old known support level lining up with the 200. So I have reasons to believe in that general price action at around $26. Now I just need to get back above that 50 SMA. And I think there's a little bit of room for us to work back into that long-term trend. I think this no, is more I, of a position, position style trade for me, at least than a swing trade. No, and uh, listen, I like charts where you want to know what the market's been doing lately, right? Like you look at Albertsons, you're like that, that could be any market condition. Uh, yep. I mean, that could be market flying, market trading sideways, market tanking. Uh, it, you know, it, it, Albertsons just being Albertsons. Nice, nice clean trigger. You know, listen, I love breaks above the 50 after a down, little downtrend. Yeah. Big consolidation. Uh, yeah. Those are some of the better trades. Uh, I love those. I love those reversals. What you got for us next? Yeah. All right, next up, uh, I'm going to go to an old friend, uh, Orange, O-R-A-N. We looked at these guys uh, about a month ago when they were breaking above resistance. Said, well, above I remember the, this. The 200. You know, you'd be uh, up 100 bucks, right, you know? Yeah, I go, well, I guess it depends on your position. Could have been up a dollar, could have been up lots of dollars. Could have right? been thousands of dollars. Have been, uh, yeah, that was a nice, you know, it, I remember you bringing this one up. It performed really well, uh, and it was really, you know, mellow. I love mellow. Sure. I mean, I really love mellow in volatile conditions, right? Because it stands out. But I like well-behaved mellow. Don't make me think too much. I don't like to move stop losses fast, right? I'm more of a, you know, be slow on that. So it was really a good solid runner. Well, they had their earnings, right? So time ran out. Generally speaking, you know, if we go back in time to, to that break above the 200 and that old, you know, price action at, at around, you know, 1150, 1160, 
generally speaking, I would have targeted it to 13. I just didn't think that that was probably realistic because of the upcoming earnings, which are now behind us. Not much happened one way or the other, as you can kind of see on their earnings. Uh, you probably can't point out where they had their earnings in there, which is probably a good thing for Orange here. Now we've got a little bit of a high base breakout with that rising nine trying to spring us up. I still have $13 in mind as a target, uh, and I feel like there's a pretty clean path into that. There's certainly you know stuff beyond that for, for sure. But that is certainly going to be a potential test. We do have some pretty good price action there. So just a little high base breakout here on orange, looking at it, taking out these highs and then really, you know, high base stop loss mechanics, right? Ideally, stop below the nine is always you know, something I'm looking for, but that is just me. So just, you know, a continuation of the, the buy signal we saw a little while ago. Got a little bit of a pause, got a little high base developing here. As long as we hold that and break through, I'm going to call that a signal to the upside. No, it's, uh, listen, uh, 45 days. Uh, this is why uh, you give the nine a chance to work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you give the chance to work because, you know, like sometimes it can just take you to places. And you, just and, never, and, yeah. and, and you never and, know I which mean, time, right? Yeah, and giving you and and doing well behaved, giving you a secondary pattern here, uh, not too shabby. I mean, hard to say no on that, right? Hard to say no on that. I have a feeling that's going to make their scattering report picks this week. Yeah, I, I think so too. Uh, and you know what? What I like about this is after you know if if we are able to test that thirteen, and if we're able to win that fight, we got a pretty decent path into the thirteen fifty sixty range where you are going to have to contend with the 200 weekly. Uh, but these guys, you know, there's, you know, this is, you know, if you look at this on say a weekly chart, this is kind of a early stages of this reversal, right? Still uh, in the overall, you know, long-term speaking, early stages of the reversal. So certainly I think uh, worth a watch list candidate, at least on orange here. Let's say I'm going to play for uh, Maddie now. Uh, I'm going to go with IIVI. I'm going to pretend I'm Matt for a minute. I-I-V-I. Well, I'm glad we started on a weekly chart. That makes that little breakout level stand out, doesn't it? It, it absolutely stands out, right? King's bed style, right? Uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm doing my, my best Matt impersonation. Uh, we have ran a little bit hot on the daily chart into that resistance, but even just today of selling, right, you know, is, is helps alleviate that pressure. It helps alleviate the pressure I've, and creates a better setup three exact, days from now, five exactly. days from now. Exactly. It gives me, you know, most likely a more confident place for an, an initial stop loss, right? Because you know you're going stop below the breakout channel. You know, you do know that, but you would sure like to have, you know, some price action, the rising nine, whatever your thing is. Uh, and, you know, just a little bit of selling could uh, get us in there. Now, if this gives us a, and again, we're saying if now, right now the signal is just the break of that resistance, right? We'll call it $75 because that's approximately where it is. However, if we do get some slowing momentum into that rising nine, I think that this could legitimately be a scale in uh, on the breakout situation. We're just going to have to monitor it going into next week. We will need to slow down I will argue that we do need to hold the nine. If the nine gives out, it'll still be a breakout, but that's probably what it'll be for me as a breakout candidate. But if we do flag, you know, or pull back into that nine in a somewhat orderly manner and get some legitimate signals, I think we probably can at least think there's maybe enough room to get one to one at that resistance level with say a quarter or a third position. Oh, and like then that. looking at adding into the position uh, and kind of finishing it out there if and when we break out uh, 83 really stands out as a first target that is where we have an old pivot uh you know on the uh, on the upside going back into you know last april it's not a particularly scary resistance zone historically but i think that makes sense for a target zone be it first or second target uh, when i look at this on a weekly chart i'm actually thinking you know that those old highs are the target but that might be you know a few trades away before we get there. So 83 is, you know, either the swing or a, you know, a first target for more of a position type of approach with some upside beyond that, I believe. No, uh, it makes a lot of sense to make, it makes a lot of sense to me. what you got next? Let's get a couple extra bonus. All ones right. A couple bonus ones, couple bonus ones. Uh, I'm going to go with docs next D O C S. 
Which one? What was the ticker symbol? Uh, D O C S. D O C S. D O C S. Long downward trend. All of a sudden, start to show some life. Gapped up on earnings, right? That's what you're seeing that gap there. I believe it was the eighth of, okay. of February. Gapped up on earnings. Drifted back into that nine, and that nine still continues to hold. Is for the us. market not, down today? You wouldn't know. You think it was a, a boring doji Friday when you look at this chart, right? When you look at this chart, I think you would think uh, it's a doji Friday. And, uh, and I love that about this chart. I love that the nine has maintained all week long, uh, regardless of, of the volatility, but certainly uh, it, when you think about the volatility, then you really appreciate it, right? I think that intraday has had a chance to really shore up as well. If you look at this, say, on an hourly time frame for potential entry, which is my intraday time frame of choice, personally, you're kind of seeing a situation where you've got a pretty clear little double top action going on while we've created these higher lows. Again, much like the weekly chart that we just looked at on IIVI, uh, right? We kind of have that king's bed style of breakout on your hand. Need to take out that high, right? Need to take out yesterday's high, I think, as a bare minimum on the confirmation. And then targeting wise, I mean, it's probably up to you and how you like to target, right? Could, you know, the, the recent highs be T1? Yeah, uh, I wouldn't fault somebody if that's how they were targeting, uh, targeting T1. Uh, but I also wouldn't fault them if they were trying to get into that 70 marker that uh, was that little swing high that we put in back in November, which also was an old resistance level shortly after their IPO, some room to run. Beyond that, I mean, this, this is a good start to a trend reversal, right? Create those higher highs and higher lows on a positive earnings response. So, you know, however you target, the window is big, right? <laughs> the, the window, uh, in my eyes at least, not necessarily the target, but the window, there's a lot that we can work with, I think, on docs here. Uh, I do think we want to hold this recent low because we, I think, for my taste at least, we've had enough upward movement uh, and positive price action off of these lows that came in early in the week to say that that support level has become fairly important. So it's, I think we do want to hold those lows going into uh, this potential, you know, however we are, you know, potentially getting in. I think if that breaks, we've given up the nine, we've created a lower high, lower low on the short term, probably looking at a pullback, but make no mistake, a pullback into the 50 slash rising 20 in that scenario, while that's still a couple of weeks away, if that's the way that it goes, that would still be in play as well, which makes it a really good watch list candidate because I think any pullback into, you know, basically the 50 day moving average is actionable uh, if it fits all, you know, checks all the other boxes. But as it is right now, I can easily prep something going into early next week. No, makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. Uh, one more. Let's do one more. These have been four good ones so far. One more. All right. We're going to go with one more. We'll go with one more. Let's see. Do we want to go on a high base on uh, eh, we've got a little high base? Let, let's look at AXP. I know this is one of Coach Greg's uh, favorites. He always brings these guys up when I'm talking to him. Uh, they they present good yeah, trades. It, I understand I mean, why is, he does. <laughs> you, know, you know, it is really interesting how well this is holding through the volatility. Yes. Like, like the last couple of days, we've had real heavy pressure in markets a lot of stocks getting obliterated and you know axp down a little bit right you know with the level of volatility but really holding its own the last couple of days if markets stabilize i mean if the markets yeah. continue to tank it's going to blow up right of course but yeah if markets course. stabilize but if we stabilize we got a high base type of pattern at a big round juicy 200 dollar round number mark right we've already kind of broken out of everything so we don't have any old resistance looming above us and at least as of right now we're still haven't even tested the nine right we're still above the nine although the candlestick this very second doesn't look particularly promising still haven't broke that nine you haven't uh, broke the nine until you've closed below the nine right so a little bit of a high base above 200 and then you know basically we don't have any resistance right so you're going to go to whatever your personal go to targeting technique is in this situation, right? Whatever that uh, might mean, do you, do you target the, the range 
of the you know high base right uh, for a target whether target one or target two that puts you about 210 makes sense for a first target at least uh, but beyond that there's still you know room to to go uh, if we can break to the upside I think especially if we can kind of hold this nine get that springboard through that high base but yeah you you do have to appreciate the way that we have held up on AXP throughout this week and particularly yesterday and today's volatility no, no i mean it's a, it's a common theme i mean all your segments are always great that's why this is one of the most popular segments we have on the halftime report but you know all your segments are all i i love them i love these stocks because they're holding their own and if markets come down to the lows and stabilize here and the market gets a little bid these things are set up nicely right yep. you know holding their own in volatility to the downside if those lows hold and you get a bit, and if they don't hold, no big deal, right? Like you don't trigger in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't trigger in. That's why, I mean, that's, these are five really, really good stocks uh, to watch listed up. Appreciate well that. Well done, sir. Thank you very much.